Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus our Lord. Preach your words. Uh, all right. Good morning. How fitting that we are at the end of our series on the day before our research week. Uh, as we go today, um, I just want us to, we'll be... Um, this is, this is a day that we can, where we need to just uh, focus on knowing how important words are, especially when we leave each other. Uh, I'm sure most of us are going out of town for the week. Um, if not, then this will be our last day before we see each other for a week. And as it, there's a moment when we get ready to leave that person that we care so much about or leave our family and friends. And I wonder how many of us actually think of this could be the last time that I speak to this person. This could be the last few words that I have to say to this person. So how, is, how important is it that I make these last words count? How many of us have those people where we know that what we say and being with them, is, it means the world? I'm sure we can all think of someone that we have in mind that we would love to make sure that if they went or if we went, that they knew that we loved them and that we cared about them and that our last few words mattered. We've been going through the, first, the, the letter of First Thessalonians, and we've gone through Paul <laughs> giving thanks to God for the Thessalonians, new babes in Christ, only being with them for three weeks, and we know that, he's, uh, he, we know that they're doing well. We know that they still have trials. We know that they are um, going through trials like persecution, and we know that they are going through trials of, 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 many, of many things. But we see that Paul has um, given them praise and keeping the faith. We know that he has warned them to continue to keep the faith, to continue to allow God to work in their lives so that they don't lose their faith in the midst of idolatry, in the midst of sexual immorality, in the midst of all of these trials and persecutions that they're going through. And now we finally come to an end of the first letter. Today we'll be reading in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 to 28. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 through 28. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved completely, without blame, at the coming of, the Lord Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I adjure you by the Lord to have this letter and read to all the brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today's objective is simply put to emphasize the power of words so that we can realize that the words we speak, the breath we breathe, is as important as anything that we do. Because we can 
do, we can, we can make, we can take actions, but if our words don't match up with those actions, then what do those actions really mean? Our words can be just as life-giving. Our words can be as um, taking life away. So we just want to really be able to, to, to emphasize that, that, that what we say is, is, is everything. In my studies, I want to point out something before we really get into the lesson. Paul uses two words in his, intri- in his, in his greetings and in, in his endings. Two very powerful words to start this off with. Grace and peace. Why does he use these two words? We see that he, he uses these two words interchangeably in the beginning and the end of majority of his letters, if not all. So he uses the word grace because this is what the Gentiles were familiar with. As the Gentiles go on their day, they wish grace and favor with their gods to others. And Jesus, Jesus' death on the cross is God's grace who takes away our sin. And then we have the word peace, shalom, which is a Jewish word that the Jews use to wish that they, this is how they greet each other, shalom, peace. And this is Jesus, Jesus gives us peace with God by making us God's friend because our sins are forgiven. So the significance in these two words is addressing both sides, joining together and their common faith. So we already see the importance of just these two words. How powerful it is that Paul mentions these in the beginning and the ends of his letters and letting us know that he's not just talking about one group of people, but he's talking about the entire body, Jew or Gentile. We go to verse 23. And why does he use God of peace here? Well, we see that this could be brought on because of the, the main the concerns for the conditions of the Thessalonians. God of peace. They've been dealing with persecution, heresy, being young in the faith, doubt. They, they, there are some that may have doubted their faith. And there's some that may be doubting the missing of the second coming. And so he ends this in letting them know that God will bring you that peace. No matter what you're going through. No matter any of these things that they may be going through, God will bring you that peace. He says that may God, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you. The word sanctify here means to make holy, consecrate, to set apart, which is what they are. This this is a new concept to a lot of them, obviously, being new Christians. So he's letting them know that, that, that God is going to set them apart if they continue in their faith, if they continue to stay faithful to God, he will set them apart from their persecution, from the heresy, from, from, from being young in their faith, he will grow them and he will nurture them to allow them to be mature in their faith. And then he says, completely. In the NIV it says, in the NIV it says, uh, completely. The word in the NIV means through and through. And in the NASB, it means entirely. So he is saying that may God himself, not anyone else, I may have brought you these words. You may have had Timothy to bring you this letter to help you in this, to help exhort you, to help encourage you. But it is God who will completely sanctify you. Here we have Paul 
emphasizing important words once again, letting them know that it is not anything that man does, but everything that God is doing. And then he goes on to say, may your spirit and soul and body be preserved completely. You may be asking, what is the difference between a soul and a spirit? Well, the spirit in the Greek, the, the definition of spirit means wind or breath. This is always pointed toward, toward, toward and exists exclusively for God. This breath can go back, to, this breath can be uh, traced back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed a man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living thing. The spirit is the breath from God himself. What we breathe, how we speak, what we say is the spirit of, of God giving us the life. Now, how we use that is determined uh, from our soul. Our soul is the seat of emotions and makes us conscious of our being. Matthew 16, 26, it says, For what will, a, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? See, the Spirit connects us to God and enables us to worship and fellowship with him. And so we have the spirit, which is our, our, the life that we breathe as we're, as we're sitting here. Our soul is, 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 is what we would call the inner man, the inner being. And then we have the body, which is simply the flesh. And so we have Paul also um, prioritizing God first and saying that he wants God to um, preserve our spirit and our soul and then our body. Because if we don't speak life, if we don't speak God, then our soul will not be able to exemplify God. Our actions in our bodies will not be able to exemplify God. So our breath, our words, what we say is the first thing to let people know if we are of God or not. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Do not fear those who will kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Here we have the, the, the spirit. We have, so we have the spirit, which is the breath of life that we have, and after that breath leaves, after that life leaves, our body and our soul separate. And so here we have to realize that, that, that it is important that our spirit is always in the same breath of God. Have you ever had the, the, that moment or have you ever said something or someone said um, someone has said something positive and then in the same breath, has said something negative, a compliment sandwich or something like that. There's a there is there's the possibility <laughs> that you have you you can the the life that, that God has breathed in you, you don't have to use it for him. And that's where our souls are are that's where the emotions, that's where the choices of using that breath for God or for ourselves. And so it's very important that we start with our spirit, that we start with the words out of our mouth, the breath that we breathe every day that God has blessed us with. And then he says, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does he mean by being kept blameless? Well, we need to be free of any legitimate accusations in our inner being and in our social relationships. Again, what is it that we're speaking in, 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 in our groups of people? 
What is it that we are, what, what is it that, that, that we're thinking? What is it that we are, what are the actions that we are taking as we are amongst our friends? What are we speaking? What kind of um, jokes are we talking about? What kind of uh, gossip may we be trying to, to, to bring about? What kind of, what, what is it, what is our daily speech like? We have to realize that this isn't just, this isn't just actions that we're taking. This is not a work-based faith, but this is a faith and, and, and to love, to, to, to be able to, to know that if I come to you, I can come to you for words of encouragement and not words of, of being, as people would say, a Debbie Downer. You know, it's, 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 this is in this small piece of, of text, we see how important words can be. We see just how impactful it is for our words to be of God as we speak, as we, as we go about talking to a stranger, as we go about even talking to our friends. Because talking to our friends can be just as easy to just let things slip out and let things um, to just speak how we wouldn't speak amongst the public. And so it starts even with the, the social circle that you're in. So we have to, we have to be what, uh, uh, mindful and aware that if we are with our spirit, if we are using the breath that God has given us in the correct manner, then we know that it, it, it starts inside, then that means that our soul also with the, will align with the, 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 the breath that we speak with. In, for, um, in the message paraphrase, First Thessalonians 5.23 says, May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, Make you holy and whole. Put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. And now we go to verse 24, where he says, Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring to pass. This is just the last reminder that God is still faithful through the persecutions. Being so young in the faith, heresy, and the many other trials that they're going through. Who, well, we have Paul expressing the confidence of God's ability to bring the Thessalonians completely, complete holiness. God is faithful. In the message paraphrase, faithful is, uh, the word faithful says dependable. How good does it make you feel to know you have a friend or a family member or someone who's dependable? Now just imagine that same person that you can think of that's, that's, that's so dependable that you can call on at any time and how much more greater God is in doing that. How much more greater, how much more greater God's dependability is. Through the, hurt, through, through the doubt, God is dependable. Through the persecution, God is dependable. Through the lies, God is dependable. And here Paul is saying that God is dependable through all of those things. Philippians 1, verse 6, which is what we read this morning for our scripture. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work and you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. God is dependable that he will be with you till the day of Christ and beyond time. And so <clears throat> we see that Paul is giving the, the, there's so much encouragement in just this small amount, this, this, these few verses that he's giving that so much encouragement, words that he is using is so powerful, so, so, so powerful that he, he, he's just, man, it's, it's, it, can, it allows them to have that last bit of hope, faith, and love 
that, that, that Paul preaches. And we go to verse 25. He says, brothers, pray for us. We know the Thessalonians have been faithful. He lets us know this throughout the letter that they've been faithful. He lets us know that the Thessalonians are doing what they need to do. So in the message translate or the message paraphrase, it simply says, friends, keep praying for us. He knows that they are praying. He knows that they are continuing to preach and teach. He's just giving them, uh, he's just asking to continue that in this sense. Just a continuation. In verse 26, greet all brothers with a holy kiss. And I know today if we read that, we are just weirded out and just looking at our neighbor like, nah, not today. <laughs> But this is simply just a cultural thing that was in that time. In some countries, they still do it where they come to each other and greet each other with a kiss on each cheek. But Americans, you know, we just mm, get back. But, <laughs> but this, like I said, is just a cultural um, custom. And then the message paraphrase, it says, greet all the followers of Jesus there with a holy embrace. Sorry to pick on you, Tyrus, but I'm sure we all know every time Tyrus sees us, he always has to give a hug. That, that's the, he, he, he can be the perfect example of what it means as he sees his brothers and sisters. Give your brothers and sisters a holy embrace. Embrace them with a, a physical hug or even words of encouragement. So a, a, a words of encouragement could be that embrace emotionally that someone may need that day. And so we, just, we need to be mindful that as we come and as we go, we should embrace each other. And then verse 27, he says, I put you under oath. I put you under oath. Or I, and I'm sorry. Just wrong. He says, I put you under oath. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Here we have Paul kind of softly using his apostolic authority here to remind them that although you have been encouraged, there is still a charge that I must give you to remind you that, that we have important, um, that this, how important this letter is. He doesn't say pass this letter around and hope that everyone reads it. He doesn't say that um, have everyone come up. He, he says read this letter. Have this letter read to all brothers and sisters. He doesn't say if anyone would like to read this, come along and or we'll have a meeting here if you'd like to come. He said all brothers and sisters to show you the implication of how important this one letter is. He didn't want anyone to be ignorant of its message about the coming of Christ and what it involved in leading a soldier, a solid Christian life. And then he ends with the word, may the, God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So what? After all this, what does that have to do with me? It has everything to do with us, especially as a Christian. So as we end today, I want to charge you. I want to send you away with an application. I want us, as we leave, as we get ready to leave out of town, as we get ready to leave this chapel here, I want us to embrace our brothers and sisters. It may be a physical embrace, but even if you don't feel comfortable with that, embrace someone with encouraging words. Let someone know, I'm glad to see you today. Let someone know, I'm going to be praying for you today. Pray with someone today. Find a moment where you can embrace your brothers and sisters. Find a moment where you can use those words of encouragement to build each other up. 
and even going out of here. Make sure that your words, your spirit, the breath that God has given you is a breath that is for God. So I thank you, and I just hope this word has, has blessed the ears.